Hi, welcome to Chemical Formulas Part 4. My name is Dr. English, and today we're going to talk about how to name an ionic compound. Specifically, what we're going to look at is how to name binary ionic compounds, naming ionic compounds with transition metals, practice naming with transition metals, naming ionic compounds with polyatomic ions, and finally, some practice with polyatomic ions. So let's talk about naming binary ionic compounds. Now the word binary means two. We're talking ionic, so this is between a metal and a nonmetal, and we're coming together to form a more stable entity, a more stable compound. So the first thing that you need to do is write the name of the positive ion first. Typically in ionic compounds, this is going to be your metal or the less electronegative element, pretty much the same thing. When you write these binary ionic compounds, the first element is not modified, so you're not going to change anything about that first element that you write. The second element is a different situation. Write the name of the negative ion second. Typically, this is going to be a nonmetal, or the more electronegative element out of the two. To this element, we're going to modify it slightly. We're going to take the ending of the element and we're going to add IDE. So here's an example at the bottom. We have CaF2. I know that this is composed of calcium and fluorine. So when I write this out, the first part of the name is going to be calcium. The second part of the name is fluorine, but we change the INE ending to ide. So fluorine becomes fluoride. So as a result, we have calcium fluoride. Now let's talk about naming ionic compounds containing transition metals. Remember, this is elements in group 3 through 12 on your periodic table. And transition metals can have ions with more than one positive oxidation state. So many of these elements are going to have two charges or three charges or even more. A Roman numeral is used to symbolize the specific positive oxidation state of a transition metal in a formula. So if you don't know your Roman numerals, this is a really good time to learn them. So this is the representation for Roman numeral number one. This is the representation for Roman numeral number two, for three, for four, five, and six. And really, you shouldn't really need anything past six, at least for Regents Chemistry. So how do we figure out what Roman numeral we need? Reverse crisscross the formula to figure out the oxidation state of the positive metal ion. So if I look at this example down here, I know that iron is a transition metal. I know that it can have multiple charges. In order to figure out what the charge on Fe is here, I'm going to take this subscripted 2, which I know to make the formula has been crossed over and down. So this is going to come back here. Iron is a metal. So it's going to have a positive charge, and it's going to be plus 2. And if I wanted to confirm that, I know that chlorine is negative 1. So negative 1 times 2 gives me negative 2. Fe is plus 2. They cancel each other out. They equal 0. So the Roman numeral that I'm going to use with the iron would be Roman numeral 2, this one right here. So this would read as iron, Roman numeral number 2, chloride because chlorine, the I-N-E ending, will change to I-D-E. Let's do some examples. Ni2O3. Nickel is a transition metal. Let's reverse crisscross our subscripts to figure out our charges. So this 2 is going back to the oxygen. Oxygen is more electronegative, so that's going to be negative. This 3 is going to go over to the nickel. Nickel is the metal, so that is positive. So if this 3 is going back to this direction, this is plus 3. And the 2 is going over to the oxygen, which that makes sense because oxygen typically is minus 2. If I double check myself, negative 2 times 3 gives me negative 6. Positive 3 times 2 gives me plus 6. So this is electrically neutral. So when I write this out, I'm going to list the metal first, not modified. So this is going to be nickel, nickel, Roman numeral number three, so one, two, three, and then finally, oxygen. We're going to change the ending to oxide. So ox, ide, oxide. Let's try another one. TiCl2. So this two 
is going back to the titanium. So that's going to be a plus two. The Cl will be minus one, because that's the only negative charge that chlorine can be. So negative one times two, that gives me negative two, so that's zero. Positive two times one, that gives me plus two. The whole thing is equal to zero, works out. So this one would be titanium. Titanium. Roman numeral number two, chloride. Because we'll take that chlorine and we'll change that I-N-E ending to I-D-E, titanium two chloride. Let's look at our last example. So this three is going to go back to the nitrogen and nitrogen is commonly minus three. This four needs to go back to the MN manganese. Manganese is a metal, it's a transition metal with a charge of plus four. So this is going to be manganese. Roman numeral number, one of the more difficult ones to remember. Roman numeral number four, and then nitrogen turns into nitride. Nitride. So again, for each one of these, you really want to pay attention to the subscripts, reverse crisscross them, assign your charges, check on your reference table, make sure that what you have for an assigned charge actually makes sense, and then with any of the transition metals that we see here, remember to use a Roman numeral to basically say, yes, this is the charge that I want to use. Naming compounds containing polyatomic ions. This is all about table E. So you must know your polyatomic ions on table E well enough to recognize them in a formula. You don't need to memorize them for the Regents exam, you just need to recognize them. If you're given the formula name and it does not end in IDE, look for the polyatomic ion in the formula. So if it ends in eight or eight, definitely go to table E to find that specific polyatomic. Never guess. Now there are two exceptions to the rules. Hydroxide, which is a common polyatomic, which is OH minus one, does end in IDE, but you're not going to recognize any hydroxide on the periodic table. In cyanide is another example of a polyatomic ion that ends in IDE, and that is CN minus one. So double check the oxidation states of the polyatomic ions on table E, always. Check, check, and double check. There's no reason why you shouldn't. So if I was to look at this first example right here, I have Na, which is sodium, and then NO3. NO3, I would look up on table E, and I'd find out that that is nitrate. Let's look at our next one. Al aluminum, it's my metal, I'm not going to modify it at all. So aluminum. SO4, that's sulfate. So I'm just gonna write sulfate. So literally what you are doing in these situations is just translating what you see and checking yourself on table E. Let's look at some more examples of formulas with polyatomic ions. Li2CO3. Li is a group one metal, that is lithium. So lithium, lithium, if I can spell that right. And then CO3 is carbonate. So just lithium carbonate. Now remember, lithium doesn't need a Roman numeral. It's group one, it can only be positive one, no Roman numeral. But you do need to be aware of transition metals because of course in a situation like this, if you started with a transition metal, you'd have to write the metal name, the Roman numeral, and then the polyatomic. Ba3PO42. Ba is barium, so barium. PO4 is phosphate, phosphate. So we just look those up on our table E. PbOH2, Pb is lead. Now I look at lead and I think, wait a second, I should check that on my reference table because I think that lead can have more than one positive oxidation state, and it can. So that means I need a Roman numeral here to tell me what is the charge on lead. This two, that is a subscript, remember if we uncrisscross this, this PB is coming up here, and then this PB would be plus two. 
the overall charge on the hydroxide is minus 1. So minus 1 times 2 gives me minus 2. The PB, there's an assumed 1 right here. That's plus 2. Everything cancels. It's neutral. It makes sense. So lead, Roman numeral number 2, and then OH is hydroxide. Hydroxide. And then finally, our last example. Ca, which is calcium, group 2 metal, only one charge, so calcium. And then C2H3O2 is acetate, one version of acetate. So we're just going to write acetate, calcium acetate. So what did we learn in this tutorial? We went over naming some binary ionic compounds. We looked at naming ionic compounds with transition metals. We did some practice with naming with the transition metals. We looked at naming ionic compounds with polyatomic ions off of table E. And then finally, we summarized with some practice with polyatomic ions. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.